On behalf of the organizers, just want to thank everyone for joining us in this inaugural investment for Family Office uh, Forum. So in the course of the last 15 minutes, we have taken in a number of questions via the system. So I believe the first question is already out on the screen now. So we just want to take a look at it quickly. And it's about on block and what should you do if one of your property uh, is in a state of going through an on block or there's a potential for on block. So there are three things you may want to consider whether you want to sell your property before the on block exercise uh, commence. Firstly, I will always tell people, uh, is this the first attempt by the development, by the condo to go for on block? Because that will determine how fast you can reach the 80% uh, consensus. So if it's a multiple attempts already, then the success rate sometimes may drop over the years. So that's the first question to consider. The second thing to consider was to look at what was the previous consensus reach if this is already a multiple attempt uh, on block exercise. If previously it was only just a 40% agreement, 50-60%, that means it's still quite far off from 80%, you may want to also consider that because even though if it's a repeated uh, exercise, you may not reach 80% really soon. And the third thing now is to really look at what's the current market value. This is very important, especially if the property you're holding is a leasehold development. So you want to see what's the current value of the property that you're holding versus the premium that you can get from an on block. For a leasehold property, sometimes the current value could be dropping more and more. So you may want to make a decision knowing that if previous attempts have been too far off from it reaching 80%, that you want to sell it now before going through another on block exercise. So this is uh, three factors to guide your decision on whether you should sell your property if they are facing an upcoming on block exercise. So thank you for this question. Uh, it was a very important one and I hope everyone can benefit from this. Right now we have the second question on the screen and the question now is asking about shop house. So I assume this is talking about conservation shop house and the question here is that should we consider buying a shop house because of the rental yield? And now the important question to actually look at is what kind of shop house, uh, which area to get and what are the attributes of the shop house that you should look at. So if you're looking to get a shop house uh, as an investment property, as an investment vehicle, uh, it's very important to ask a few uh, things again. So the first one is whether is there a proof F&B license for that shop house. Uh, we have limited cons uh, conservation shop houses in Singapore, uh, but even fewer come with approved F&B licenses. In some certain uh, areas, F&B licenses are not given out anymore. So if you're looking to buy one, ideally you should buy one that already has an approved F&B license. And secondly, it's also important to look at the dimensions of the shop house because for a F&B operator, uh, this will affect whether they can use the space and let's say for example if the frontage is slightly narrower you may get a cafe operator or a coffee house versus a michelin star restaurant so the kind of rest, uh, rental yield or rental rates that you'll be getting will be very different between the two so these are the things to look at ideally you should have very good frontage at least uh, more than four meters and then uh, the other attributes of whether there are staircases and so on will be important factors all right, and in terms of rental yield or capital gains, this is always the chicken and egg question. Uh, just to put it very simply, when you're looking at conservation shop houses, capital gain is really the main driver or the main motivating factor to buy conservation shop house. Because the rental yield sometimes can be poor compared to maybe other investments that you can make. But once you make the right choice in terms of a shop house, the capital gain can be multiple four as we have seen in recent times uh, in some of the places in Amoy Street, in Kyongsia, in Boki where the return on the shop house is multiple. So capital gain I would say is the major uh, portion that you should really focus on. The part on uh, rental yield is something else uh, that will be more secondary but it should not be so poor that it totally makes no sense in the monthly upkeep of the shop house. So that was a very important question again so thank you and I hope these guidelines will be helpful for all of you.